Hey, what's up guys? Drew here over at Rev Hike Outdoors, and I've got a video for you today. Uh, this one is, I, I've, I've wanted to do this one for a little while, and, and I'm getting around to doing it. I'm just going to do it. Um, today, I just want to show you guys some of my all-time favorite pieces of gear. I've owned a lot of different gear over the years. Uh, some of it's stuff that I carry every day, some of it's hiking stuff, backpack, you know. It, it kind of comes from all different... Um, you know, kind of sections of my life, but this uh, is kind of a compilation of my all-time favorite stuff. Some of this stuff I've had for a really long time. Some of them I hadn't had that long, but it it uh, I like it so much that it's replaced stuff that I've had for a really long time. So I just want to uh, get into that. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, kind of this thing right here behind me. Uh, this is my Thermarest sleeping pad. Um, this is a, the Scout length. It's like the three-quarter length. Um, you know, it, it's it's really nothing special. I think it's called the Trail S for Scout or short, something like that. Um, but this is as tall as it is. I'm sitting down, and you know, it's, it's not even as tall as me. This was like my go-to sleeping pad for a long time. I'm like close to 10 years. This is all I used. Um, and I really, I really like this thing. I still use it. I still toss it up in the hammock sometimes. Um, it still gets lent out to friends who don't have stuff. Um, you know, my kids use it. They play on it. I mean, this is just, this has been a super solid piece of gear. Um, it's just lasted forever. And I can't, I can't really say anything much more about that. It's, it's stood the test of time. I bought this um, when I was still in high school. Uh, yeah, I was still in high school. I, I think I was like, um, I think I was 18, uh, 17 or 18 when I bought this thing. So it's been around the block um, and it's seen a lot and, and it's held up. So that's number one. And these are in no particular order, like my all-time favorite to my, you know, th these are not ranked. These are just things that I have loved um, that have really served me well. Um, the next one I'm going to go into... Um, is going to be, I think this is the piece of gear that I've had the longest out of anything. I bought this, excuse me, my mom bought it for me uh, when I was 14 um, in high school, 14 or 15, and yeah, because I was going into 10th grade, um, I'm 30 now. So uh, I was going into 10th grade when I got this, and it was supposed to just be my backpack for school, and um, you know, attaching my skateboard to it because I did go through a skater phase, um, and and this is it. Um, this is um, made. You probably can't even read it. It's so beat up by now. But it's the Apollo PX. This is the thing on the back of it. Apollo backpacks are still available. This model is not. Um, you know, pretty obviously, but. Um, this thing was built for skateboards. You know, you attach it here and and here and. You know, it was, it was made to have uh, skateboards put on it. Um, I don't even know where to begin with it. This thing has been all around the world with me, literally. I mean, uh, I did everything in school with it. I did um, every trip I've ever taken, I've taken this. This was my main pack uh, when I was recently in Mexico. Um, I took this to Haiti with me when I went on a missions trip to Haiti. Um, this came to Jamaica with me on my honeymoon. Um, this has been to the top of mountains in Oregon and Montana and New York and uh, some in Vermont, one in Canada and British Columbia. Um, this has been to the Grand Canyon with me. Um, basically, wherever I've gone, this has been it. When I was traditional backpacking and I had a heavy pack, um, you know, huge pack, this would be the day pack, the summit pack that I would bring with me. Um, and it's, you know... Even uh, in my ministry as being a pastor or whatever, I throw my Bible in this. I throw a change of clothes in this. It's like my overnight bag. It's, you know, whatever I need this bag to be, it's, it's been it. Um, Going to sound strange, but I've, like, strapped guns. Uh, I've strapped uh, bow and arrow. I've strapped all kinds of stupid stuff to the back of this so I could ride on my motorcycle. And right now it's currently my motorcycle pack, everything that... Um, any, anytime I take a ride and I need stuff, this is the pack that comes with me. It smells like the exhaust for my bike, which I love. Um, but this pack has just been absolutely bomb-proof. Um, when I first started going ultralight, this is the pack I used. 
I just scaled down my pack and brought less stuff and, and this was it. So this thing is just absolutely bomber. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'll never get rid of that pack. If something breaks on it, I'll replace a zipper. If I don't know what I, I won't get rid of that pack until it's literally disintegrated. Um, in keeping with packs, another one of my favorite packs, and this kind of really changed the way I did a lot of things, and um, was my lumbar pack. And when I first um, purchased a pack to go ultralight in, uh, this was it. When I stopped using stuff that I had and I bought something, I bought this, uh, and this was inspired by Intense Angler's series on super ultralight gear. Um, I couldn't find like one he was talking about, so I found this was the next best thing. This is the Mountain Smith Daylight. Again, it's it's been really solid. I've had it uh, several years. Really like it. Um, and if you watch a channel, this is the pack I'm using this year for my current ultralight setup. So, Mountain Smith Daylight. Really love this thing. Um, you know, I've done reviews on it. It's, it's a great pack. I really, really like it. Uh, served me well, super comfortable, and uh, pretty versatile. So, love this pack. Uh, next. Oh, excuse me. Um, next is uh, something that really changed the way I backpacked. Uh, and one of the biggest things in, in backpacking is sleeping. It's uh, something that people struggle with a lot. And, and uh, hammocks kind of really revolutionized the way... I did backpacking. Um, it added a new set of challenges, but it relieved my back pain from sleeping on the ground. I've got uh, a couple herniated discs and some bulging discs, so I needed comfort, and hammocks um, really provided that for me. And it doesn't work for everybody, but uh, Eno hammocks really changed the way I backpack. Um, at first, I started with a single nest, and now, if you you know if you know if you follow, but this is the Eno Sub Seven. Great hammock, um, great, great hammocks. They make they make great stuff. Uh, not the cheapest stuff in the world, but they're good. And for me, it really has allowed me to continue to to do multiple night trips um, and really increased my comfort on the trail. And um, I just I love them. Really changed the way I did things. So that's been a very important uh, piece of gear, and, and I love them. Um, next thing was this. No, not another hammock. I just have it in a hammock bag. Um, down jacket. This is my El Cheapo down jacket that you guys have seen in, in some videos. Um, you know, whatever down jacket you've got will do. But a down jacket, when I really got into down and, and I got this, um, really changed things. Really allowed me to go light and compact. And that has been uh, a big thing in, in my backpacking journey was finding... Uh, getting that and and thankfully I found that one really cheap because uh, I was not prepared to spend 200 bucks on a on a down jacket um, so anyway there's that next thing that really altered the way I do do things the way I backpack and really helped my ultralight game significantly because of the price and because the utility was the trifecta um, this is the version 2 but uh, this you can kinda swap out you can use the trifecta version 2 you can use the Trifecta version 1, the first thing, which really changed the game. Uh, but the one that started it all for me was the, um, the SOL Escape Bivy. Um, and that had its limitations. Um, and then you had the Trifecta 1, which had a lot of advantages to that. And then this, which fixed all the problems of the tri or all the shortcomings of the Trifecta 1. So this is kind of like the... Um, the final iteration of, of the uh, SOL bivy, in my opinion. Uh, and this is kind of the escape bivy perfected, if you will. Um, so, but that style of sleeping bag really changed how I backpacked, uh, allowed me to save a ton of space and weight um, for really cheap, like really cheap. This thing's like 63 bucks. Um, I mean, come on, you, you start getting into like down bags and stuff, you're looking at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, for like the same temperature rating basically so these things were a game changer love it Th this is something that I'll never get rid of um, next uh, actually this might be the piece of gear I've had the longest no the backpack is this is probably second and I bought this around the same time as I did the thermarest this is the MSR pocket rocket stove and you can see um, it's been well used well used 
love this thing. Three ounces of awesomeness. Um, you know, a lot. Some people don't like the you know the butane fuel and all that stuff. I, I don't care. This this was a game changer for me. I, I love 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 this stove. Um, you know, gear hall of fame for me as far as I'm concerned. And really, any of the stuff I'm showing today is like kind of my hall of fame. The stuff that that I love that I'll never get rid of. Um, in keeping with the stove theme, uh, this, this is my alcohol stove. One of the first I made and in my opinion still the best. It's double wall style. Um, this thing's beast. I, I love it. Again, this is another Intense Angler thing. So big shout out to Intense Angler. If you don't watch him, know him, go ahead, check him out. Um, just so you know, this video is probably going to be kind of long. Sorry. Um, this is stuff that I really like and enjoy, and I want to tell you why it stays in my Hall of Fame, because um, I think it's important to know why stuff makes it. So this thing really changed um, my thinking on stuff. I kind of thought that this was as light as it could go, um, and this is still like a really good option. But, you know, when I made this, this was really cool. I just, this was like, this was like the coolest thing that I'd ever seen that you could make a, a stove out of like a, a coke bottle or and I think this was Mountain Dew um, and and have it work so well and weigh like you know fractions of an ounce was was amazing to me and I've made a lot of different stove builds uh, this one is the absolute best in my opinion on, on how it works so there's that uh, next if we're keeping with the fire slash cooking um, this is something that I got into when I was just a kid in, uh, in that survival camp I used to go to. It's called Deerfoot Lodge up in the Adirondacks. Um, awesome place, by the way. If you have sons and you're looking for a place to send them to learn awesome stuff, Deerfoot Lodge, check them out. Um, this is a, a, just a magnesium and uh, ferro rod combo made by Coughlin's. I've had this forever. Um, the original one I had, I lost, and I had to buy this. Uh, now I think you have to buy them through Dones, because even Coughlin's has gone the way of more zinc in here, but I, I've made more stinking fires with this thing. I, I like them better than a ferro rod in most cases, because um, built-in tinder that will always burn. Uh, love it, love it, love it. Awesome thing. Had it forever. Um, something I'll never get rid of. Never get rid of. Um, next... Uh, let's do lights. This, um, I, I've told the story on the channel before, but I was, um, in a, in a cave in Oregon and my El Cheapo light gave out and I said from there on out, I'm, I'm going to have good lights. Now, luckily I found a light that really wasn't expensive, but has been absolutely amazing. Made in the U.S., guaranteed, warranty, all that stuff. It's the, uh, Princeton Tech Fuel. Um, really, as far as I'm concerned, any of the prints and tech stuff that you're going to buy is going to be good. Um, stuff's made in America. Uh, some have lifetime, some have 10 years, some have five-year warranties. So they make good stuff and they stand behind it. Um, th this light has just been just been like bomb-proof. I just I've had I've had this 11, 12 years. Awesome piece of gear. Um, battery life is phenomenal. Um, if I had to get rid of all headlights and just keep one, it'd be really close between this and my Fox Alley. Um, but I think this would win because of the triple A's, um, I think. But I, I love this thing. It's, it's been faithful light forever, so there's that. Next with lights is something, uh, an EDC light of mine. Uh, and you can see here it's got, uh, it's got a good amount of wear. Uh, it, it sees a ton of pocket time. And this is easily my favorite handheld light. Um, this is the Streamlight ProTac 1L. There are lights that I've had longer, like the Streamlight uh, Stylus Pro, which really should have been in this video too. Um, but I didn't want to like put a bazillion lights in there. Um, but between the Stylus Pro and this, um, two fantastic headlamps, or uh, excuse me, lights. Um, this one sees a ton of pocket time. The one I really like that's new is uh, the Thorfire PFO4. Um, I recently did a review on that. I really like that light too. That's um, If that thing has some longevity, it'll definitely end up in the Hall of Fame. 
uh, but this has been a great light. So uh, not exactly cheap, but has a great warranty, nice and bright. Anyway, good light. Um, uh, before we get into knives and stuff, I want to cover one thing that really changed it up for me, um, and it was the, the Sawyer Mini. Um, I've used the like the MSR filters, uh, I've used tablets, I've used uh, you know boiling, I've used a lot of different ways to purify water, I've used life straws. Um, this the Sawyer Mini has been probably probably the best I've ever had, best I've ever used. Um, super cheap, like twenty bucks cheap, and this is like a hundred thousand gallons. Some guys say they like the Sawyer Squeeze better because it has a better flow rate and stuff, uh, and it's not that much heavier. Um, I like this because it's twenty bucks. Sawyer Sawyer Squeeze is a little about double the price, um, and for me this works wonderfully. Don't let it freeze, and you know keep the water out of it. But other than that, as far as water filters go, this was a game changer for me uh, for being lightweight, compact, and cheap, and really never needing to replace it. So. Um, you know, no one's really going to get 100,000 gallons during hiking. So, awesome, awesome, awesome. Last things I'm going to cover uh, are knives and tools. And uh, I'll go with this one. Um, this is my Leatherman Charge TTI. Um, I, uh, I got a Leatherman Charge TI when I was uh, in high school. My mom got it for me as like a Christmas present. And it was kind of like a high-end Christmas present. But um, I carried that thing for I think like seven, seven years, something like that. Uh, on the job as an aircraft mechanic, uh, as, a, as a bus mechanic, um, as just fixing stuff in my house. I always carried it with me backpacking. Um, I've made uh, repairs to like external frame packs that I used to have with it on the trail. Uh, awesome, awesome tool. Um, it got stolen, uh, and yeah, that was just bad, but uh, it, I got it replaced with the TTI, which was the second iteration of it, and basically just improved on the main blade steel. Went from 154CM to uh, an S30V. Um, if you're looking for a multi-tool with like a high-end blade steel, this is going to be like one of your only options, uh, and it's a great option. But uh, anyway this thing has been just absolutely awesome. I use it to fix a ton of stuff. It's always either in my backpack, in my truck, or on me. Uh, it's it's always close at hand. It's never far away. I've got a couple bit kits with it. I've I put all the bits that I commonly use into one of the holders and that's what stays with it all the time. Uh, it does the maintenance on all my other knives and tools and gear and everything else. So. Um, I really can't say enough about this. Leatherman is awesome. I've uh, really never had bad experience with their products. I have several of them. Um, and, but you know, that was a pretty expensive piece of gear. The next thing I'm going to show uh, is a very inexpensive piece of gear uh, and one of the best pieces of gear I own for 14, 15 bucks. Uh, and that is the Mora. This is the Mora Companion Heavy Duty. This one costs a little extra. I do have two of the regular Mora Companions um, and I've, I've given away a few of them. Um, I've got the Mora 511. Basically any Mora knife that you buy is worth it. Regardless of, of how much they charge for it, it's worth it because these knives are awesome. Um, if you watched, if you know the channel, you watched uh, the video uh, where I did <clears throat> uh, my top three survival items. I took a stainless steel bottle, I took a Mora, and I took this. Uh, was this or a ferro rod? I can't remember. Um, but, I mean, look, if I had to go with three, this would be one of them, because this thing is just bomb proof, dirt cheap, high quality, retains an edge forever, and the regular companion's only like three ounces. So, that's I think that's with sheath. So, if you're looking for like a, a bomb proof, great camp knife that weighs next to nothing, and you know you can just myrtleize it, and it won't it won't die on you. Go grab a mora, uh, and if on the off chance that you abuse the snot out of it and break it, you're only out 15 bucks. 
that's shipped to Amazon. So, uh, Mora, go buy them. You're not, you're never gonna find a better knife for the money, or three times the money. So anyway, there's that. Last piece of gear I'm gonna go into is one that I'll never get rid of. Um, it was something that I saved for a long time to get, um, and and it, it's something that I just can't seem to put down. Uh, and you've probably seen it in a couple other videos, but it is my Benchmade 940. Um, great knife, great knife. Lightning fast deployment, fits in your pocket. I mean, there's nothing to it in your pocket. Um, just, just a great knife. S30V, which is very nice steel. Million ways you can open this thing. Um, you can see I put one of my favorite scriptures on there. I kind of scraped in there, Hebrews 4.12. Love that scripture. Um, and I love this knife. Ergonomics are great. Materials are great. Aluminum scales, titanium backspacer, you know, S30V blade. Um, this is a knife that if, if you told me you have to get rid of all your folding knives and you can only keep one, this would be it. Just like if someone told me I had to get rid of all my fixed blades and only have one, this would be it. If I had to get rid of all multi-tools, this would be it. Basically, if you told me I had to get rid of everything but one or two of, of something, these would all, all the things I'm showing you today would make that cut. Um, so, really, uh, that that's it. That's all I'm going to show today. I might do some more specific videos like EDC or backpacking or whatever, but um, the gear that I've shown here... Uh, has just been phenomenal. A lot of it I've paid for. Some of it has been sent to me, uh, like the trifecta. And um, but you know, this is all stuff that I would buy again. I'd spend money on this stuff twice. If if I lost it all in a fire, this is all stuff that I would go and replace. Um, like exactly, I would I would get every every one of these pieces of gear again, uh, without exception. They'd all be bought. Um, Anyway, guys, I know this is a lengthy video, looking at like 22 minutes or so, a little over. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. This, you know, this is a video that I just wanted to do, uh, just to let you guys know some of the stuff that I've really has either changed the way I've done things or just been a super reliable piece of gear. Um, all of this stuff, you know, would get my seal of approval. And like I said, it's it's stuff that I would replace if it was ever gone. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe this gave you some insight on some of my favorite stuff. There's a lot of other gear that I like a lot and that I would replace, but these are kind of my, my absolute favorites. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, God bless you guys. As always, I will talk to you later. Have a good one.